two fantastic things. When we will be discussing one of the most fascinating and mind-blowing stories in the lives of saints. Today, we will be discussing the story of Saint Therese of Lisieux, popularly known as the Little Flower of Child Jesus. Alençon, France, on January 2, 1873, and was the daughter of Zélie and Louis Martin. Both her parents were devout Catholics, who would eventually become the first married couple canonized together. They had nine children, but only five survived. All five of their surviving daughters became nuns. Therese was very energetic and open when she was a toddler, but when she was barely four and a half years old. Her mother passed away. After her mother's death, Therese started to be oversensitive and did not want to be noticed. She was looked after by Pauline, her elder sister. When Therese was nine, Pauline left home to join the Carmelites. She couldn't control the remorse of having to lose Pauline. First her mother, now her sister. This resulted in Therese having nervous tremors. No doctor could diagnose her. The sickness had taken a toll on Therese's body. The doctors would come and leave showing no signs of hope. She couldn't handle the pain the disease had caused. She was lying on her bed, gazing at the statue of Virgin Mary. Therese suddenly felt that her sickness had left her. She had regained her health. This incident increased her determination to join Carmel. In summer, newspapers were filled with the story of Henry Pranzini, who was found guilty for the murder of two women and a child. Therese prayed longingly for the conversion of Pranzini, yet Pranzini showed no regret. As his neck was being placed on the guillotine, he grabbed a crucifix and kissed it three times. Therese was ecstatic because her prayers had saved him. She continued to pray for Pranzini after his death. One day, as her father was sitting in the garden, Therese approached him slowly and sat beside him. She expressed her earnest desire to become a nun. Louis and Therese broke down and started crying. He slowly picked up a flower and explained to Therese how God had cared for the flower and preserved it. To Therese, the story of the flower was like her story. She tried entering the convent, but she couldn't because of her young age. Then they went to the bishop, but had no positive reply. All their attempts had failed. In 1887, Louis along with Celine and Therese went on pilgrimage to Rome on the priestly jubilee of Pope Leo XII. During a general audience with the Pope, Therese ran towards him, knelt down and asked, Could you please allow me to enter Carmel? The Pope replied, Well, my child, do what the superiors decide. You will enter if it is God's will. But Therese refused to leave his feet and the noble guard had to carry her out of the room. The vicar general sitting next to the Pope was impressed by Therese and allowed her to enter Carmel. Therese entered the convent as a postulant in 1888. She observed all the rules in the convent and followed it strictly. She used to say, I did not come to Carmel to be with my sisters. On the contrary, I saw clearly that their presence would cost me dear, for I was determined not to give way to nature. In 1889, she entered into the novitiate. During this period, she started wearing the habit. In this year, 
Therese deepened her sense of vocation. She led a hidden life, forgetting herself and praying and offering sacrifices for priests. She started emphasizing on the importance of littleness and humbled herself through works of charity. Since she was too young, she lived as an unprofessed novice for another eight months. In 1889, her father suffered two strokes which resulted in memory problems and a tendency to run away from home. Due to this, he was confined to an asylum. Therese couldn't even meet him, but she never failed to do her works and kept her sorrows to her heart. On September 8, 1890, when Therese was just 17 and a half, she made her religious profession. She started praying even more fervently and participated more often in works of charity. She did not even get angry at unjust criticisms from other sisters but gave them a pleasant smile as a reply. She was often assigned the duties of a spiritual sister to pray and sacrifice for others. Since she never complained, she was always given the worst leftovers to eat at the convent. She wrote, I have always wanted to become a saint. Unfortunately, when I have compared myself with the saints, I have always found that there is the same difference between the saints and me as there is between a mountain whose summit is lost in the clouds and a humble grain of sand trodden underfoot by passers-by. Now Pauline was elected as the superior. She asked Therese to continue as a novice to reduce the fear that the Martin sisters were taking over the convent. Therese agreed without hesitance. She would have to ask permission for almost everything and could never be elected to positions of importance. It was during this time that the process of beatification had been started for Joanne of Arc. As a commemoration, the Carmelite sisters decided to perform a play. Therese had written two plays on Joanne of Arc. A few months after the first play was performed, on 29 July 1894, Therese's father died. She soon recovered from the sorrow and the next year, the second play was performed. The play was going well, when her costume almost caught fire. Therese did not flinch either to the right or to the left. But the incident had a significant impact on her. Therese entered Carmel with the ambition to become a saint. After six years, she understood that she remained far away from the unfailing love she wanted to practice. It was during this time that she learned to ask God's help. Therese wanted to attain holiness. On her way, she understood one truth. You need not have heroic virtues to become good. She wrote, Love proves itself by deeds. So how am I to show my love? Great deeds are forbidden to me. The only way I can prove my love is by scattering flowers. And these flowers are every little sacrifice, every glance and word, and the doing of the least actions for love. One day after a rigorous Lenten fast, she was tired and went to bed. That night, she felt a bubbling stream mounting on her lips. The next morning, she saw her handkerchief covered in blood. Coughing up blood meant tuberculosis, and tuberculosis was incurable. It was a death sentence. It slowly caused her health to decline. Each day pain and suffering used to devour her, but in spite of it, she did not lose faith. Therese kept all of this a secret and did her work without complaint. 
but her sickness did not go unnoticed. She was suffering more than ever. She was nearing her death. Therese, in her last hour, said, I would never have believed it was possible to suffer so much. Never, never. She received her last Holy Communion at the glimpse of death. Before going into the eternal sleep, she exclaimed, My God, I love you. She died on 30 September 1897 at the age of 24. She was beatified on 29th April 1923 and declared a saint on 17th May 1925 by Pope Pius XI. Her feast is celebrated on the 1st of October. She was declared the 33rd Doctor of the Church by John Paul II. Saint Therese of Lisieux is the patron saint of florists, foreign missions, laws of parents, priests and those who are sick. She had great devotion to the holy face of Jesus. Saint Therese of Lisieux is a great example. She shows us that anyone can become a saint through simple deeds of charity and mercy by forgiving those who made unjust accusations and praying for the most sinful of sinners. She is a great example for us to live by. Jesus said, Love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you so that you may be children of your Father in heaven. For more videos like this, subscribe to Fantastic Cattle. If you enjoy this video, be sure to give this video a like and share it with your friends and family. Thank you and God bless.